All right, guys, I'm not gonna say too much in this video because we're back at my friend Lance's house and he has a very interesting truck that I'm gonna show you guys, which I think is gonna become more popular as you guys have seen other YouTubers build these kinds of Toyota Stout trucks. So I'll let him do the talking and show you guys around this really neat truck. All right. Hey guys, I'm Lance. Uh, this is my 1966 Toyota Stout. You've seen Lance in some of our other videos and he has a 1966 F100 on a Crown Vic frame and it's very similar kind of the Rusto mod kind of stuff that we like where we take a older vehicle and put the old rusty kind of body onto a modern frame so you won't have any issues if you, you go to the auto parts store and get parts or whatever do modern performance suspension on an old car like this so this is a very similar kind of build concept where Lance is going to show us why this is such a unique build and that since this car is so rare how unique this is especially in the united states to be able to build one of these yeah, so this is my 1966 toyota stout it is now on a uh, bagged 1992 uh, toyota chassis uh, built by nick at uh, weldmore fab it's going to have a 22r there's no motor in it yet uh, but it'll be, have a 22r so basically a, almost a stock 1992 toyota underneath this 66 toyota body uh, which is really hard to find parts for. They're super rare, they only made 4,000 of them, so I wanted to have the uh, serviceable ability of this truck as well. What made you go with this chassis on this particular truck? So I'm only 27, but I'm getting into the mini truck scene as it seems since I've owned a few past couple years. But I've always known that the 90s Toyota, don't quote me on the generation, but the 90s Toyota trucks are like one of the best mini trucks. There's some legendary trucks out there, for it being a Toyota, and I wanted to go with a modern Toyota frame, so I wanted, I figured the 90s, this is on 92, so I figured the 90s would be the best option for this truck. Um, I have a few buddies that have them, and I asked around what the best parts for these trucks were. Um, I, were t I was told by my buddy Jeff, he's got some awesome trucks, um, we can link his social media down below if he cares. But he told me Can Do Specialties, which is an old mini trucking uh, company. Sorry to the mini trucks that are, might be watching this video. I don't know much. Like I said, I'm old, I'm, I'm young, I'm getting into the scene. Uh, so Can Do Specialties control arms, upper and lower on the front. And then rear is all Thor Bros, which everyone knows who Thor Bros is. It's a full uh, Thor, Bros, uh, Thor Bros four link and uh, universal kit and then a bridge kit that we put a bag on bar instead of the bag on bridge, which the kit was for. I wanted something that's been proven over the years and I just, I just know that works. And if any, if I needed some, needed help on anything, I know there'd be plenty of people out there that could help me with it. What's the history aspect right, of this? This is not a international scout, at which people at the gas station that come up to you randomly call it. This is a Toyota Stout, which is the first ever truck that Toyota ever imported to the States. Uh, that was from 1964 to 1967. Uh, uh, so in the first year, Toyota sold these trucks, only sold four trucks, which is absolutely crazy. They had them in dealerships here and they 
only sold four trucks yeah, so in the first year. Trucks, yeah, they sold four trucks the first year and then about a thousand the year after that. So anyways, they weren't popular at, at all. Um, I don't know if that was their plan to only import 4,000, but that, that was that's what happened. So it took me about five years to find one of these trucks. Uh, I, actually, about four years. I saw my first Toyota Stout at, well, I, don't, I wasn't at SEMA in 2016, but I saw a photo of a truck uh, that Toyota Museum brought to the show. It was a white Toyota Stout. That looks crazy. What is that? It's a Toyota Stout. So I looked on Pinterest and you know Google and saw yeah. bagged photos of someone like Japan. Before at that time, there was only a couple of these trucks like built, mm -hmm. you know, like modified. So I was like, I have to have one. And then fast forward to 2020, I found one on our Stout group on Facebook. I joined that, no, trying to find one. But if you found one, they're typically on the West Coast, so they're not typically on the East Coast. We're in Maryland. I found this one in Virginia. Um, I was actually on a plane to St. Louis to go buy a 77 C20 crew cab with my buddy um, when I bought this truck over the phone on a plane. Uh, got back a couple days later and I had this truck in my driveway. Sweet. And I, from that moment, I knew I wanted to bag the truck. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's what's so interesting about this build is I haven't, I don't know if I've ever seen one on bags, let alone like especially with this have, is there many on bags i haven't even uh there's there's a few um well, i think so there's two like famous ones or like they've been around for a while his name is lao i believe sorry if i'm butchering that but he has since passed away it's a white toyota stout mm -hmm. actually on a 92 chassis as well 91 92 chassis as well, uh, as well. um and it's got an ls3 oh LS1, that's cool uh, ls3 i believe so is it on a stock frame or is it it's a stock toyota uh chassis uh, a 92, you know, that body style chassis, but it's full air ride and everything, and it lays. Um, and then there's a red truck uh, by a guy named Eric out in California. Um, that's been around for a while as well, that's bagged. And currently, there's a few stouts being built. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Ryan Turk, but he's a drifter, uh, just kind of world famous. He's building one currently, and us in the stout community are very excited for that. It's gonna give us some like world recognition, you know. Uh, there's a couple other guys uh, in the style group and guys I know that have some that are currently under uh, construction that are being built. Some crazy builds. There's one guy out of Arizona building an awesome one with the Ford V8. There's a guy that's got one with the 1JZ in it. Uh, my buddy Jacob actually has a finished stout that's bagged. Actually, we can put him some pictures of this truck when it was stock next to his bag stout. Uh, he's out of North Carolina. There's a, so there's a few out there that are modified and currently and being built. So Definitely not as common no, as they're not uh, as common f100s and c10s or whatever yeah, not at all not at all <laughs> obviously with only four thousand of them and imported yeah. to the u.s you obviously and, don't and see if you think ones. about it, at that time a lot of stuff that was coming from that part of the world their metal was a lot thinner and they never undercoated that stuff yeah they so came from factory rotted. so a lot of times they like dots and 240z's for example came rusted from like once they got off the you know shipping containers you know uh they were like you know surface rust not yeah. absolute rust but a lot of that stuff never survived you know and think about like in that day american you know patriotism was like real big so yeah no one wanted just... to buy you know this you know this stuff so yep this stuff just didn't last yeah exactly yeah so give us like a quick walk around of this thing show us what yeah. makes it so cool all right so this remember the 66 toyota stout is on a 1992 uh toyota chassis uh, if anybody is familiar so it's got Candu Specialty Arms, which is a company that is non-existent anymore, but is legendary in the Toyota uh, bag truck game, evidently. So where'd you find those arms at? I found those on Marketplace. My buddy Jeff, who told me about those arms, oh, okay. he then tagged me in a post. Sweet. So thank you, Jeff, once again. <laughs> um, so Nick from a little more fab, um, as you can tell, fabbed up the whole front end. Yeah, uh, we got, good. Um, so my big thing too, uh, we wanted to keep the fender, so Nick was able to do that uh, with the, some minor. It still needs some minor trimming, um, but I, at least it has that still stock look. So my big thing was to keep this truck looking basically stock, but just on the ground. Right. And I think uh, Nick ha and I have. Well, I don't really do much yet, but Nick <laughs> has hit the. Yeah, it looks great. I wanted this truck to be based around these hubcaps, which mm -hmm. are super hard to find. If you find a Toyota Stout. They're probably not going to have the hubcaps. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I kept these. So I'm going to have to get another Steely, uh, but we're going to do, uh, this is a 14. Uh, I probably want to go with like maybe like a 15 or a 16 maybe. Um, 18s look really good on these trucks, but they're also kind of big for what I want. So I'm going to try to stay at 15. Then I'm going to do a, f a fat white wall. 
Yeah. here. I might keep beauty rings, I'm not sure. I'm not usually a fan, but it looks really good on me. So the front actually will go a little lower um, once the weight of the motor is in the truck. So this front cross mover will lay on the ground Yeah. as long as this whole frame uh, lays uh, flat uh, on the ground. Yep. That's sweet. And so the only thing, I mean, the only thing, but so motor, obviously, uh, got to figure out our steering angle with a column. Uh, a couple of things like that in here. So are you going to use the, you're just going to adapt the Toyota uh, steering column to the yeah, so box I that wanna you have? Yeah, so I want to keep the stock wheel. Uh, like I said, I want to try to keep this truck as stock, you know, looking as possible. So yeah, we got some things to figure out, but um, this is the stock, you know, Toyota um, box. Yeah, the box. Uh, box. Yeah. Um, this is the 92. Um, I said, I'm just going to stay manual steering, manual brakes. I mean, I don't know about manual brakes, but we'll figure it out. This, having a 22R in it with a five speed. Yeah. Um, so this truck originally came with a four speed, which was a three R. When I got the truck, for the purists out there, this truck wasn't original when I got it. It had a 8R out of, swapped out of a 71 Hilux um, in it with a four speed. So they cut a hole in the floor. So so these trucks are originally four speed on the uh, column. Yep. Um, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool, four yeah. speed on the column. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a heck of a drive. Another thing too is, I'm a tall guy. I didn't want to cut the floor or, you know, so it's body dropped, body dropped through the mounts. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't want to cut the floor because um, so I need all the space I can get as a tall guy in this truck, which is already very small inside. I look like a giant in here. Uh, so still stock floor, which is awesome. I'm going to have to make a new tunnel uh, for the drive shaft and transmission. Uh, but other than that, the inside, and it's, this truck's not really rusty. It just got some surface rust up here. The only rust in this truck is on the bottom of the rockers. And there's some random, just like a random hole underneath this blue tape for some reason. I don't know what happened, but that's about it. No, it's really solid. It's like 95% rust free. I mean, you couldn't, especially like you're saying with issues with rust back yeah. then and the issues with Japanese yeah. cars back in the day, this thing is super solid. Yeah. Originally, it was, most of them were sold west originally. And this truck came from California. I got the Thor Bros, four link and bridge kit for the truck. So it's supposed to be bag over uh, axle. But like I said, Nick, He's an expert, he knows what he's doing. He suggested we do bag over bar because I didn't want a big notch at first or anything. Um, I wanted to retain as much floor, uh, yep. bed floor as I could. Yep. So we went with a bag on bar setup um, and then raised the bed floor about six inches. Yeah. And then if you could tell, we added um, this wall uh, just because the this bed, this bed, uh, what do you call it, wall, it's not double, it's the single wall here. And it's uh, curved, so we added this just to kind of give it that stock, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see that over here. And here's Nick. Yeah, so go check him out. I'll link him. <laughs> and you can guys see on his Instagram, especially. And in, does he have Facebook too, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook. He's a one-man shop. Yeah, he so, has all the pictures yeah. of the fabricating this thing, so pretty cool. And you guys can see the frame down here on the ground, so... Can't get any lower than that. Yeah, it's if so. The these are a little different than like a lot. So the pinch weld is a lot lower than the like door and cab itself. Yeah, like I said, and the bed is also higher too. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of you know funky stuff going on. But like I said, it's awesome. Like I said, you could we could see the frame and we could have had it you know or you know cut the pinch weld off to get it completely. Yeah, but it's such a I, solid truck too yeah, you don't really like, like i don't care you know yeah. about that much like some guys that are into the bag scene you know it, it gotta to be, be on the yeah. floor like to, i don't who cares yeah uh so and like i said if it like i said i want to open my door without any problems and yeah, i want the stock bed floor so yeah I, it's perfect it, it's i couldn't ask for anything else yeah it looks great sweet yeah so you guys can see what they had to do to raise the bed floor up they did a pretty good job definitely like if you put the bed up you definitely wouldn't know how low the truck, like the suspension of the truck, a lot of times the whole C notch of the frame will kick up in the bed and everything, but it looks really sleek. So you wouldn't even really tell that it had been modified if you didn't know any yeah, better. Yeah, so there's no C notch in the frame to kick up through the bed, pretty slick. Yeah, it gives you more room, you know. Yeah, and you can use the bed. So here's this fuel cell he's gonna run. We're gonna try to figure out how to make that work in the bed. You know, Nick already made the straps and everything for the, the fuel cell sits in there. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason why it's not in there is because the cap, you know, fill the uh, fuel up with is kind of, it, it hits the bottom of that bed. 
and we don't want to cut a hole in it just yet because it'll stick a little above the bed floor. Uh, so we just got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I might get a new fuel cell or just, you know, somehow figure it out. Um, and then air tank and then the gauges that I got from Boris over at Street Machinery. It's a manual. I want to, like I said, I want to keep this thing as simple as possible. So no electronic app, you know, type stuff. So gauge oh, is your, your four control yep. right here. Yeah. So nice. I, gotta, I don't want to like just be in the open. I might try to hide it a little bit somewhere yeah. in there, but I said we got a little ways for that. Sweet. Where are you going to put the air tank? The air tank is mounted uh, on the rear over here as well. And it's uh, and the compressors, they all mount on the frame as well. Um, so everything's underneath the bed and tucked up in a tidy way. Uh, so another thing uh, Nick did uh, was create cab mounts. Um, obviously, since you know it's a new frame. Mm -hmm. So he had to make new cab mounts and bed mounts. And what he did, which I really liked, is he made the mounts for everything kind of look like the stock stout mounts. So, and up here on this front uh, core support. So this this whole bracket, or it's not a bracket, whatever you want to call that thing, um, is actually from the '92 chassis from the rear of the truck. Oh, so he reused so it. So actually, yeah, we were, yeah, he reused that, uh, and it, it looks kind of actually like the factory stout. Yeah, as that's well. sweet. Yeah, um, and then what he did as well, he lowered the bumper just by a hair like so the factory bumper came up and blocked off about like just probably around here mm -hmm. and he lowered just a little bit yeah um so was the wheelbase pretty much the same as uh no so the the 92 chassis is about an inch and a half longer okay inch longer something like that and then when he so he measured when he did the frame swap he centered the front wheel first mm -hmm. and then when he came around to the rear he you know, lined it up where it would be center, and then when he did the notch, that's mm -hmm. where he took out that inch. Oh, you know, gotcha. Or added it, wherever the, you know, math is. So he just moved the rear axle up when he did the yeah, notch yep, for the, yep. yep. Yeah, so it's all the same wheelbase now. Sweet. So yeah, the frame itself has not, like, yeah. you know, the middle or anything hasn't been spliced or cut or nothing like that. Too. Yeah, it's super cool, because he could fit that notch right up in the wheel wheels and yep. stuff. It looks awesome, yep. so. Sweet. Yeah, well, it turned out really good, so I can't wait to see this thing go down the road. The, definitely, a work in progress we're gonna have to come back and do a check-in video see the progress of this thing all right guys well thanks so much for watching i hope you guys like this kind of video i definitely want to do some more videos we have so much cool stuff in this area i think that these kind of videos would be really cool especially showing different cars that we necessarily wouldn't be able to build but other guys like that we know in the area could build and so we want to see their kind of projects too. So we'll definitely check back in to Lance's other projects. He's got the crew cab and that beetle that we rescued in the previous video. He's a bunch of other cool stuff that we can check out along the way. So definitely stay tuned for more content on the Stout later on. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So if you guys saw the video a few weeks ago on the beetle, Lance ended up cleaning it all up. Looks pretty good. And we ended up running and driving it and he ended up getting it running and driving even better. So we drove it here with uh, me working the gas and Patrick steering it. And then uh, he ended up fixing it and getting it running and driving. So if you guys are interested, hit him up. I'll put his Instagram here. And if you want to own one of these mint barn find beetle, you can. This is a perfect car, like a beginner project. If yeah, you want to drive it and work on it, it's a great solid start for a beginner project car for sure. And they're so easy. They're very cheap to find parts for. These are great cars, especially if you're trying to look for your first car to get into kind of the classic car scene. This is a great starting point. And then if you guys have seen the previous episode where we got the bed for our F-250, this is the truck that it came off of. And I'll put that video up here. You guys can check that out. But this is the crew cab. Yeah. And uh, definitely is in a different shape than what we saw it in the last whenever we pulled the bed off. So... He's gonna redo this in full thing. No, it's a great. If you are from the East Coast and you own a '66 Era Ford pickup, you know they don't look like this. No, it's yeah. not perfect. But this is it. for us East Coast boys. I mean, it's got rust here on the, you know, the cab mount, and it's got some rust here and there. But this is like mint. No, sports. this is <laughs> this is amazing shape. Yeah, so definitely another project we'll have to keep checking in and seeing the progress of. So this is going to be an exciting build too. I want to get a crew cab also, but I have eight other billion projects. So we'll get one one day and then we'll have two crew cabs. Yeah.